Okay, <clears throat> well, uh, in the first video in this series, we took a pretty in-depth look at a whole bunch of different Bible passages that um, pointed to the possibility of these Nephilim being on earth. And we went through all these passages and we talked about how part of what they were doing was also corrupting the DNA and that God brought Noah's flood as part of that. But then we saw the Nephilim again afterwards. And then we even saw newspaper clippings of giants with a very similar description all across America and in Europe and whatever. So I said in there that I was going to also uh, get into something maybe a little bit more uh, controversial. And so I decided to do a separate video on this more to try and generate some feedback to see um, if other people agree with this um, analysis I'm going to do. And if not, this video will be easy enough to delete. So it's sitting by itself. Um, first thing I want to say is uh, I talked about how multiple versions of the Bible were important. And in particular, I mentioned it was good sometimes to check in for the Old Testament to the Septuagint, which was um, a Greek translation of the Old Testament. And it was commissioned in the uh, mid 200s BC, mainly because the Jewish people at that point, since Greece had dominated uh, for so long, they also enforced their language on all the areas that they dominated. And so even in the land of Israel, the predominant language, language was common Greek. And so in the mid 200s BC, uh, the Jewish priests got together, commissioned 70 or 72, I think there's a debate on that, uh, priest to translate the Hebrew Old Testament Bible and related books from Hebrew into Greek. And one, there's two things that might be important about that. The first one is that Greek, I guess, is a very precise language. And so part of this translation gives us the benefit of Jewish scholars in that day translating to Greek and able then to take the meaning as the Jewish priests understood it of the Hebrew text and put it into a more precise language, which is Greek. The second thing is, is because this translation is from 200 BC, it represents at least a translation of writing that's as old or older than any other copies of the Bible that we have. And so, although the Dead Sea Scrolls were done in the native language, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek, I guess it'd be Hebrew and Aramaic in the caves. Um, and that would have been around 100 and something BC. The Septuagint is from mid 200s BC or thereabouts. And so with all that context, what I've got is translation into English of the Septuagint. So now we're going from the original languages, Hebrew to Greek, and then taking Greek scholars and putting into English. And that's why you don't just use the Septuagint as it's been translated twice. So I'm using a, a version of the Septuagint. Uh, here's the URL, and again, I'll paste it below the video. It's frequently called the Nets translation. Um, New English, let me see here. New English translation of the Septuagint Nets. So um, we'll put that in the link below. Now, and it comes uh, broken out by books into a PDF, so it's a little harder to go through. But I'm in Isaiah 13, and 13 and 14 typically are um, thought of as, well, they're relating to Babylon, but they cast into uh, end times. And so I was just interested when I found the Nets Bible, it was published in 2009, I guess, second edition, that how did it interpret some of these more difficult passages in Isaiah? So let me just read through 13 and 14, make some comments as we're going. Okay, a vision which, and this is, we say Isaiah, son of Amos saw against Babylon. 
on a mountain in, a, in a, the plain, raise a signal, raise up your voice to them, do not fear, encourage them with your hand, open you rulers, it is I who instruct, I lead them, they have been consecrated, and it is I who summon them, mighty ones, and the footnote down there says, giants, come to fulfill my wrath, at the same time rejoicing and reviling. A voice of many nations on the mountains, like that of many nations, a voice of kings and of nations gathered together. The Lord's Sabbath has commanded a heavily armed nation to come from a distant land, from the utmost foundation of heaven. The Lord and his armed men will destroy the whole world. Wail for that day of the Lord is near and a destruction will come from God. Okay, let's pause right there. A whole bunch of interesting things in this translation, which, to be honest, I don't think you get in some of the other English translations. <clears throat> we, we saw that this is against Babylon. Now, again, uh, we know that in Revelation 13, 17, and 18, Babylon is the final world governing system as well as the religious system and I suspect it's actually going to be an actual city. Um, there's lots of reference to the plains of Shinar which would put it in the actual area of Iraq. <clears throat> and just as in days of old uh, when the Jewish people rebelled uh, in particular um, in five or in 605 BC um, when Babylon had the first diaspora for the Jews, they came in and took away uh, Jerusalem and all the people. God talked about that in terms of that was his judgment that he was consecrating and bringing. And what are the very things we see here? God says, I who instruct, I lead them, I have consecrate them. And it is I who summoned them. So this is God's judgment that's bringing forward um, whatever these giants are to fulfill his wrath. And so we know the last seven years is considered the wrath of God. And now we see that God is bringing forth these mighty ones. <clears throat> okay. A voice of many nations on, uh, on the mountains like that um, of many nations a voice of kings and of nations gathered together. And we know there's going to be 10 kings at the end um, in the end times. And the Lord of the Sabbath has commanded a heavily armed nation come from a distant land. Get this, from the utmost foundation of heaven. Well, we talked about how um, Satan and, and his fallen angels get kicked out of heaven um, and he only has a short time in the last three and a half years are him ruling on earth. And now all of a sudden we see uh, from the foundation of heaven, <laughs> here comes this group of people. <laughs> the Lord and his uh, armed men will, will destroy the whole world. And that fits, bam, exactly what we've got in, in uh, the Revelation, especially in the last chapters during the bold judgments. Okay, wail for that day of the Lord is near. And if you want to tie things up, go back to Joel chapter 2. Uh, we might do that in a future video. But he uses this exact same painting that the day of the Lord was near. And he tied it to uh, the moon will turn to blood and the sun will go dark. And so we might look for some astronomical signals to this. Um, and it, again, it talks about uh, how everybody's going to be so frightened. And behold, the day of the Lord comes, a day of wrath and anger to make the whole world desolate. Now, here's another one. For the stars of heaven and Orion. Okay, <laughs> the stars of heaven, stars, if it's being used symbolically, are angels. Okay, and Orion here, of course, it's a constellation. But Orion has often been uh, used in relation to 
uh, Nimrod, when he died, there's, a, you know, the folklore says that he rose into heaven and was represented in the constellation Orion. So this is, this is sort of blowing my mind when I read this. And all the ornament of heaven will not give its light. Well, if the stars of heaven or the angels of heaven fell and Orion or, uh, you know, let's say Satan or the Satan spirit with it, of course the stars will not give their light and it will be dark when the sun rises and the moon will not give its light and I will command evils for the whole world. Okay, wow. And for the impious, their own sins. So you see why I went to this passage and made it separate because this is blowing my mind when I read this. And I will destroy the pride of the lawless and bring low the pride of the arrogant. Um, and those that will left will be more valuable than unsmelted gold. So again, when all the judgment's over, we got very few people left on earth. A man will be more valuable than the stone of Sophia. For heaven will be enraged and the earth will be shaken out of its foundations because the fierce anger of the Lord, the Lord's Sabbath in the day when his wrath comes upon it. <clears throat> and those that are left will be fleeing like a gazelle or like a wandering sheep. There will be no one to gather them so that man will turn to his own people and a man will run to his own land. For whoever is caught will be defeated, and whoever is gathered together will fall by the dagger. So we see this mass slaughter going on. Again, it fits Revelation. And they will strike down their children in front of them, and they will plunder their houses and take their wives. And I am stirring up the Medes against you, who do not take silver into account, nor do they have any need of gold. Uh, I'm sort of curious what this means, but it, it could mean that these fallen angels, these these Nephilim giants, the mighty ones referenced up above, don't care about getting paid in silver or gold. There's no way to bribe them. They're just going to do what they're going to do. They will crush the arrows of the young men. <clears throat> they will have no mercy on the children, nor will their eyes be sparing upon the children. And Babylon, which is called glorious by the king of the Chaldeans. Uh, Chaldeans in uh, Iraq, it's the land of Babylon. So the king of the Chaldeans is probably this Antichrist. It's, he's probably, you know, Nimrod returned, if you want to think of it that way. As will be when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And now he's talking about overthrowing Babylon. So here's where I see a, a specific city because it's getting overthrown like Sodom and Gomorrah and will not be inhabited forever, nor will uh, they enter it for many generations. And that fits Revelation, says Babylon will be destroyed, will be the haunt of demons, and smoke will rise forever. So again, it ties up exactly. And wild animals will rest there, and the houses will be filled with noise, their sirens will rest, and the demons will dance. Hmm. Donkey centaurs will dwell there, okay, <laughs> and hedgehogs will build their nest in their houses. It is coming quickly and will not delay. Um, i got to look at the footnote for the, the, the donkey centaur thing, but again, uh, hybrid manipulation was one of the problems with these Nephilim when they were on the earth earlier, and it's definitely... Uh, predicted that crossbreeding, uh, genetic experimentation, potentially is going to lead to crossbreed species here with all the genetic stuff that we're doing today. So I'm, I'm just, I'm very curious when we see some of this stuff. Now we'll go through 14 and finish off. And the Lord will have compassion. Um, and the Lord will have compassion on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and they will rest in their own land and the Gorias will be added to them. Um, indeed, he will add be added to the house of Jacob. Oh, uh, resident alien. So, um, sorry, the Gorias are 
probably going to be the non-Jewish people that live in the land of Israel will become servants of the Israelis, will be added to them. Indeed, he will be added to the house of Jacob and the nations will take them and bring them into their place and they will obtain an inheritance and will be multiplied on the land of God for male and female slaves. Okay, there we go. And those who captured them will be captive and those who dominate them will be dominated. So um, it looks like God's going to turn the tables that the Jews that are being chased during the uh, final seven years and being killed and being captured, the tables will turn and now God's saving Jacob. And so he's actually going to make them, the people that were capturing and trying to kill the Jews, the servants of the Jews in the millennium. <clears throat> and it will be on that day that God will give you rest from your pain and the wrath and your hard slavery which you were subjected to them and you will take up this lament against the king of Babylon wow here we go again the king of Babylon this has got to be the antichrist here and you will say on that day how has how the exactor has ceased and the taskmaster has ceased God has crushed the yoke of sinners and the yoke of rulers having struck a nation in wrath with an incurable blow smiting a nation with a wrathful blow that spared no one he rested confidently the whole earth shouts for joy and the trees of lebanon rejoice over you even the cedar of lebanon saying since you fell asleep the one who has cut us down has not come up okay so um let's just keep moving here Hades beneath was embittered on meeting you. So <laughs> we see the destination and we know that the Antichrist is uh, cast into hell. Actually, he's cast into the lake of fire. And all the mighty ones who have ruled the earth. Well, there we go. The mighty ones footnote is giants. And we're in the context of the end times. So the giants are back on the earth, rose up together against you. Those have rouse their thrones and all the kings from the nations. And I'm going to say right now, this tells me that the 10 kings in the final structure of um, the whole world government are probably going to be these giants, Nephilim, come back <clears throat> and will answer you and say, um, you two were taken as we were and you were counted among us, but your glory has gone down to Hades your abundant joy, they will spread decay beneath you and, and cover you with a worm. Okay, how is fallen from heaven the day star which used to rise early in the morning? Okay, there's a reference to Satan. He's been crushed into the earth who used to send light to all the nations. Well, we know Lucifer means actually light bearer in the original language. And... Um, if you go into uh, current day occultism, the Illuminati are the enlightened ones. These things seem to be tying together. You said in your mind, I will ascend to heaven. I will set my throne above the stars at, of God. I will sit on a lofty mountain upon lofty mountains toward the north. I will ascend above the clouds. I will be like the most high. And that's always been Satan's goal. But now you will descend into Hades, <clears throat> into the foundations of the earth. Those who see you marvel at you and say, Is this the man who troubled the earth, shaking kings, the one who made the whole world desolate? Okay. And overthrew cities and has not released those who were in misery. All the kings... The nations have fallen asleep in honor, a man in his own house, but you will be cast out on the mountains like an abominable corpse, with many dead, those pierced with daggers, who go down into Hades, as a cloak stained with blood will not be clean. So neither will you be clean, and because you have destroyed my land and killed my people, you will not remain forever, you evil seed. And this harkens right back to Genesis 3. God said that 
uh, Satan and his seed will bruise the heel of Christ, but Christ will crush the head. Um, or actually, um, her seed will crush the head of Satan. So this notion of seed is being used here again, and um, Satan's seed would be his uh, descendants, and some people read further into seed to be uh, the descendants um, genetically descended because inside of a seed is what the genetics of the seed of the plant so they could be using a genetic kind of a descendancy here prepare your children to be slaughtered for the sins of your father <clears throat> so this is interesting if if this is a genetic relationship then any buddy that was a descendant of the seed of Satan um, or this genetic type offspring will be slaughtered and they will not rise and inherit the earth and fill the earth with wars, which um, that very likely Satan's been behind all the wars in the earth since, since the Garden of Eden. Now rise up against them, says the Lord of the Sabbath, and destroy their name and their remnant and their offspring. Well, there we go. So, boom, we've, we've gotten Satan's seed out of there. This is what the Lord says, and I will make Babylonia desolate so that a hedgehog will dwell there and it will become nothing, and I will make it a miry pit of destruction. <clears throat> this is what the Lord Sabbath says. As I have said, so it shall be. As I have planned, so it shall remain. To destroy the Assyrians from my land and from my mountains, and they will be trampled, and their yoke shall be removed from them, and their renown shall be removed from their shoulders. I'm probably going to come back and do a whole video on the Old Testament view of the Antichrist, because he's called the Assyrian, and now we're seeing that the Assyrians from my land and from my mountains will be trampled. I think what we have is a lot of uh, picturing here that if um, the Antichrist does come from the land of Assyria in some notion, or if this is just a reference to Nimrod who built the city of Assyria, and then him and his people is maybe what's being referenced here. Um, and they'll be destroyed. And this plan, the Lord has planned against the whole earth. So again, we know we're in the end times. The judgment's the whole earth. His hand will be raised up against all nations of the world for what the holy God has planned, who will scatter it. And his hand will be raised up, who will turn it back. In the year of King Ahaz died, the word came, may you not rejoice, all of you allophiles. And I think this is a reference to the Philistines. Um, I have to go back and check that that's true. For the yoke of him who struck you is broken. From the seed of snakes will come forth <laughs> the offspring of snakes, and their offspring will come forth as flying snakes. Woo. So we know that symbolically um, Satan represented himself as a snake or a serpent. And now what we see is... Um, the seed of the snakes will come forth as the offspring of snakes, and their offspring will be flying snakes. Okay, I don't know if we read too much into this, but we had earlier up in 13 the notion of the group that's going to rule has fallen from heaven. They return as mighty ones, giants, Nephilim, as in the days of Noah, and now we're getting some reference here that the ones that are st striking or killing the people in the land of the Philistines, it looks like, are descendants, genetic descendants of these mighty ones, and they come as flying snakes. Uh, so is this a reference to UFOs? I mean, I don't know what the flying part could be. And the poor will graze through him, and poor men will rest in peace. Okay, well, let's go up. I'm almost done here. But he will wipe out your offspring with famine, and your remnant he will wipe out. Wail, O city gates, let the troubled cities cry out, all the allophiles, because smoke comes out of the north, and there is no way to live. 
What will the kings of the nations answer? The Lord has founded Zion, and the humble among the people will be saved through him. Well, that <laughs> ends this video. Uh, I'd love to see some comments on this one because it, it's blowing my mind, all the different references that we went through. Um, again, this is the Nets Bible translation. The link will be down below. We're in Isaiah chapter 13 and 14. And now I'm going to come back in the next video and look at one more passage out of this Bible. Thank you.